We are super excited not to be in the AWSP studios today. Instead, we're at T-Mobile Park. And yes, believe it or not, I'm sitting with another Scott. And actually, this Scott's way smarter than I am. Scott Service of the Mariners. Thanks for being here. Oh, glad to be here. Actually, I should say, thanks for letting us here. No, it's a perfect day. Good chance to sit down and talk with you. We'll see what we got today. Yeah, well, your office is a lot nicer than mine. A little bigger, maybe? Yeah. It gets a little messier, though. During the game, it doesn't quite look like this. <laughs> well, I might start spitting and stuff in our office. <laughs> okay. but. So, we really appreciate you taking the time out. I know it's a game day and a crazy time for AWS Speed to ask for some of your time on a game day, but we just love getting out and talking about the important role that leaders play in systems. Yeah. And I know you're a huge fan of culture and how culture really sets the foundation for any program or business. Um, when did you find yourself knowing that you need to lead with culture first? Well, it, it's crazy, you know, you go through a lot of experiences. I played a long time, so you get to be around leaders and how they do it in different styles. And uh, I think before they really define what culture was, whatever, there's a certain environment uh, that you came to the ballpark, you got in the clubhouse, you got around the team, and right away, uh, this is how we do things. And, uh, you know, that is driven by your leader, uh, by the manager, and the culture that he sets up. So. Uh, getting the opportunity to come to Seattle, um, you know, really important. We wanted to change some, a few things, uh, what we do here with our team. And, you know, uh, this is my fourth year here as a manager. And culture is a living and breathing thing. It continues to change over time. And, and it, it happens that way as you learn. And I've learned a ton since I've been on the job and uh, continue to learn and, you know, introduce, you know, new players this year to what we're doing and how we do it and why we do it. So it's something we spend a lot of time with. I really enjoy it. Uh, because I continue to learn throughout, you know, develop our, developing our culture and establishing our environment. We spent a lot of time talking with principals about the difference between climate and culture. Hmm. How would you see that uh, playing out in baseball, the difference between the two? Climate changes. <laughs> there can be some storms that come in. It certainly <laughs> happens during the course of a baseball season, you know, and, and it gets a little, you know, you'll have some tornadoes, some crazy stuff that comes in and changes the climate. Uh, but your culture has to be consistent. Uh, and I think that's it comes from leadership. It comes from myself, coaching staff, you know, Jerry Depoto, our front office. Uh, but, you know, the climate can be a little rocky, but the culture's got to be very constant. Awesome. So let's uh, talk about your own K-12 experience. Mm -hmm. When you think back to schooling, do you have any school leaders that jump out in your in your mind that you remember? Oh, I think everybody probably looks back at their maybe their favorite teacher uh, or a coach who made big impact. Certainly, if you've been in athletics as long as I have, you run across coaches that can really um, lead you down the right path. Um, you know, and I think as far as principals go, there's always that person that sits at the top that's overseeing everything, and that's really the guy or gal who does lead your culture and sets the table for what your environment should be like. But, uh, you know, there were certainly some people that made uh, positive impact for me along the way. A principal has 180 days where the kids are coming mm -hmm. and the teachers are there and they're, they have to keep that culture going throughout yeah. the whole season. I see some real parallels between oh, yeah. 162. You guys really play that many games? We play that many games, and it happens over a course between with spring training and our travel to Japan this year and everything else. It's about seven and a half months, and we actually have less off days than principals do. Yeah, uh, because we work on the weekends. <laughs> you know, uh, so uh, it is a unbelievably long season. Uh, there's so many things uh, that come up throughout the course of the season. Uh, whether it's injuries, uh, you know, the players, the shuffling of your roster in and out. Uh, there's hot streaks and there's some cold streaks along the way. So just knowing going into it that this is what you're going to, you know, what's going to come upon you and your team, uh, it helps a little bit, but living it every day, it's, it's not easy. It's tough and, you know, they always say, oh, you got to leave your, leave your job at the office. That is a tough thing to do. Um, certainly with all the games we play and you know you, you lose the tough run one game uh, you know you got to come back the next day and play day game right away and you really got to have a short memory uh, and let it go because how you act how I interact with my team is so important to how those guys go out and go about their business every day yeah well we talk to the principals quite often about self-care hmm. or balancing work-life yeah. balance how do you do it? What are your strategies? Well, uh, I, I do try to get some exercise in. My thing is actually running the stadium steps. I love to do it. I uh, do it in every ballpark. I don't do it every day. I try to do it, uh, and we play a three-game series. I try to get out and do it two days. Uh, some stadiums are much tougher than others, just how, you know, how they're uh, constructed and the steps and whatever. But running the lower bowl, sometimes even getting in the upper deck, that's kind of I put my headphones on. Uh, get a good sweat going. Uh, you can just kind of 
try to let it go and let the stress out a little bit. So I uh, try to do that as much as I can. I mean, the work-life balance is tough. Uh, it, it is just because, you know, I've got three kids. Uh, my high school sweetheart is my wife, and she's been with me from day one. So they, it, it just becomes ingrained. This is what we do. This is who I am. And as much as I'd like to separate it, uh, I'm all in, and it's hard not to, to, to bring it home with you at, at night a little bit. But uh, I love the job. I love having the opportunity to, to impact young people uh, in a positive way through such a game that is so driven by failure. You know, baseball has so much. I mean, if you're you know, going to the Hall of Fame, you're a 300 hitter. That means you failed 70% of the time. So dealing with failure on an everyday basis, baseball parallels, parallels life so much. Um, and trying to keep people going and patting them on the back and you keep moving down the road to the ultimate goal. And the ultimate goal here for us with the Mariners is to win the World Series, uh, which is not easy because uh, there's a lot of really good players and competitive people out there, really smart people in the game. So it's a constant battle, you know, every day. So if you had a chance to tell that helicopter to be quiet, <laughs> if, if you had a chance to... Uh, say to a whole room full of K-12 principals. I mean, they have just finished their 162 game season, um, many of whom didn't make the playoffs. Uh, some of them are probably questioning whether they want to come back for another season mm -hmm. uh, because they've been beat up throughout the year. Um, you know, if you were to look into that camera and, and tell them something about their work and, and their why, what would, you, what would you have to say to them? Uh, I think, you know, don't underestimate the impact that you do make in young people's lives. Um, all the players that I've been exposed through uh, throughout my career on the coaching side of things, uh, along the way, every one of them realized they can never do it alone. Somebody has helped them, uh, a coach, uh, a mentor, or whatever, and that's, that's what you're really doing. You're making a difference in young people's lives, which is huge, and you don't always get rewarded uh, in the paycheck. Uh, but you know, if you want to be great at something, it's really the passion that drives you. Uh, it's not so much the paycheck. So uh, at the end of the year, I know how I feel. I am gassed. <laughs> I really am gassed. Yeah. And you just want to get away from it. Uh, and then about five days after it's over, I'm like, okay, how do we get better? What can I work on this off season? Who can I go visit? Is there another coach out there that I want to learn from and continue to grow? That's what really drives me, and hopefully that's what's driving you. Awesome. So just like when I travel around and ask people who their favorite principal is, it's kind of a joke now that I do travel with this, this, <laughs> this board of the school leader paradigm. Okay. Um, we really feel like this captures the essence of leadership because leadership, as you know, is complicated. When you look at this paradigm between a leader becoming and a leader doing, what jumps out at you in the work that you do? Uh, well, certainly culture is important, but I think oftentimes people see my job in professional sports, it's always driven by wins and losses. And you know, there's so much that goes into you know, your culture and the wins and losses, and a lot of it is driven by the, the relationships. Uh, it's the, your ability to connect people within an organization. And in my job, it really comes from not just the players, but coaching staff to our analytical group, to our, our front office group, to what's going on in the minor leagues. So, you know, in baseball operations alone, within players, coaches, you're talking about, I don't know, 300 to 400 people that you're trying to connect and keep it all, uh, you know, moving down the road in the right direction. When sometimes people are going to have their own things they want to deviate towards and, and it's certainly they're goal driven but trying to get everybody on the same page all striving uh, for the ultimate goal understanding that we got to be consistent with our process and how we're getting to that goal so that's a relationship part of it for me and that sounds awfully similar to principling it is you, it, it really is you got to get people to buy in and, and how do you do that you you give them autonomy to do their job you trust them to do it. Uh, I think a pat on the back is not done enough. Yeah. And, and really appreciate what people do. It's the little things that sometimes go unnoticed. And from a leadership position, if you do notice it, give that teacher, give that student a pat on the back once in a while, and maybe they're not expecting it. it goes a long way into building that relationship and the loyalty I'll eventually need. Right on. Hope you're ready for the next episode, hey.